Dr. Samuel Amankwa, Dr. Beryl Autry, Dr. Salome Augusta Paul, Dr. Patience Jeffrey, Dr. Natasha Ose, Dr. Kojo Safo, Dr. Achan Amobadi, and your host, Pastor Kojo Chubisi, onto the Hood Light series as produced by Kofi. All right, we want to thank you all for tuning in this evening. We are about to begin the show momentarily. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet the 2019 North American Ghanaian Adventist Doctoral Class. Welcome into the show, Dr. Kofi Chimisi, Abigail Yantachi, Dr. Melody Amponsa, Dr. Samuel Kwate, Dr. Samuel Amankwa, Dr. Beryl Autre, Dr. Salome Augusta Frimpong, Dr. Patience Jeffrey, Dr. Natasha Ose, Dr. Kojo Safo, Dr. Achan Amobadi, and your host, Pastor Kojo Chubisi, onto the Hood Light series as produced by Kofi and Kojo Chubisi. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet the 2019 North American Ghanaian Adventist Doctoral Class. Welcome into the show, Dr. Kofi Chimisi, Abigail Yantachi, Dr. Melody Amponsa, Dr. Samuel Kwate, Dr. Samuel Amankwa, Dr. Beryl Autre, Dr. Salome Augusta Frimpong, Dr. Patience Jeffrey, Dr. Natasha Ose, Dr. Kojo Safo, Dr. Achan Amobadi, and your host, Pastor Kojo Chubisi, onto the Hood Light series as produced by Kofi and Kojo. All right, man, I am so excited. Welcome to the Hood. Hood Life, that is. Yes, 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 y'all. After months and months and months of waiting for this highly anticipated program, the highly anticipated program is finally here. And I hope you can see me nice, live, and clear. If you're here at this moment, just kind of comment down in the YouTube section, comment down in the Facebook section, and let us know that you are around. Because we definitely want to make sure that we are interacting with you throughout the entire course of this program. Oh man, let me just uh, let me just pinch myself real quick. I just had to do that in order to really make sure that this day was real. And yes, indeed, this day is real. And so, at this moment, I just want to kind of talk to you guys about how did hood life kind of come about. Well, let me tell you all how that kind of happened. Well, it was in the summertime, and while I was in the summertime, I was doing one of my favorite activities which is uh, scrolling through Facebook. And as I was scrolling through Facebook, something kept occurring to me. Let me tell you what it was. What kept occurring to me is that, you know, on Saturday, I would check my Facebook and boom, I would see that one of the Ghanaian Adventists just graduated with their doctorate. I said, well, that's just one, congrats to them. But then I'll check on Sunday, I was boom, another one of our Ghanaian Adventists just graduated. And weekend after weekend after weekend after weekend, I would keep on checking and I'll keep on seeing that some one, another one of our Ghanaian Adventist individuals, young adults, have just graduated with their doctorate degree. And so, as all of this was taking place within my mind, my brother, Dr. Kofi Chumasi, came up to me and he was like, Kojo, Pastor Kojo, have you seen all the individuals who are graduating with their doctors? And so I said, yeah, man, I've totally seen it. And this is what Kofi said. Kofi said, yo, we have to celebrate it. I was like, celebrate it? He's like, yeah, man, we have to celebrate it. And at first, I was like, mm, nah, I don't think we should celebrate it. I mean, people are going to think that we're being cocky. People might think that we're showboating until something occurred to me. It's almost as if something spoke to me. And this is what the words said. The words said, Kojo, don't worry about that. Don't worry about what people are th- going to think. You need to celebrate this. This is why. Ooh, if you're listening, don't miss this. It said, you need to celebrate this. Watch this now. Because what gets celebrated gets repeated. Mm. What gets celebrated gets repeated. This is why hood life is here. It's here so that current people can also repeat 
these same achievements and more. Her life is here so that future generations can repeat these achievements and more. Matter of fact, we could have celebrated by throwing on some DeVito music and by having both from your favorite auntie. But we said, no, if we're going to celebrate, let's celebrate in such a way where we can do a program that can create lifetime value for people. And so that's why Hood Life is here. But Hood Life is also here, y'all, as a way to say thank you. Well, what do I mean? This is what I mean. You know, I am my mother's greatest fan. If you ever come to a time when I am preaching a sermon and my mother is in the audience, I don't begin my sermon without shouting out my mother. Why is my mother my greatest fan? This is why people look at my life and say, whoa, Pastor Koji, you're a success. You've done your thing. But here's the truth of the matter. My mother was my first teacher. My mother was my first coach. My mother was my first mentor. My mother was my first instructor. And at the end of the day, the reason why she was able to be all of these different things is because she made illimitable sacrifices for me. She took a step back so that I could take a step ahead. So in a very real sense, this is also the same story for many of the graduates in this class. And in a very real way, this program is a collective way to say, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Not only that, though, but last but not least, you know, hood life is sort of like a pun, like a double entendre, double meaning. Now, I'm from the New York City, the big apple, the big easy empire state of mind. And in New York City, one thing that we say all the time is, shh, I'm from the hood, man, I'm from the hood, we live in the hood life. And when, when someone says they're living the hood life, what we're doing is that we're making a reference to struggle and pain. But on that day when you also get your doctorate, in order to recognize that achievement of yours, they put a hood on top of you. And that hood there, no, it doesn't represent struggle and pain. Instead, that hood represents victory and achievement. And in a very real way, we're calling this program Hood Life because those two experiences are interconnected. At the end of the day, you can't achieve victory and success unless you, let me say it this way, you can't achieve the victory and success of the hood without having the struggle and pain of the hood. But in a very real way, without the struggle and pain of the hood, you will never appreciate the victory and success of the hood. And so that's why we're calling this program Hood Life. I've given you all a sufficient introduction. In case you didn't know, my name is Kojo, in the words of fabulous, in case you ain't know so. And no, I don't have my doctorate degree, but I am a pastor and I graduated with my master's back this year. And for the rest of this uh, entire duration of this period, we are going to be talking. We are going to be conversing with various individuals who have received their doctorates. But before we do so, a couple of groundbreaking things. The first thing I want to share with you, as I told you before, we are here to give you value. And so we have a four volume companion set book that we are giving out to people. But here's the trick. We're giving each volume each night. So the only way you can gain access to this book is that you have to tune in every single night. And so here's how it goes. If you would like this book, we have a link. And the link is at the bottom of our YouTube page. It's at the bottom of the Facebook. And if you go to this link, you will be able to just type in your name and your email address. And from there, we will be able to get volume one to you. If you want volume two, you have to tune in tomorrow. Now, here's the thing. It is called the top 25. So pretty much what you're going to do with volume one is that you're going to hear the top 20. You're going to hear the top 10 secrets of success from uh, the people who are going to be talk. We're going to be talking to tonight. And in a way, it's going to anticipate the people for the next day. And so if you want that book, I want you to put your name, your email down so that we'll be able to get that thing to you. Here's the next thing. What's the flow of this program? How's this thing going to go? Well, I'm going to tell you all how we're going to jive. The way we're going to jive is that I am going to talk to our guests for a little bit. After that, we're going to open the lines so that you can call in. And when you call in, you will be able to also ask these people some questions as well. What is the number for the call in? Mark it down. Mark it down. Here's the number. 347-791-1406. And 347-791-1406. Six. At this moment, we're going to take a short break. And after we take this short break, we'll be back with our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet 
the 2019 North American Ghanaian Adventist Doctoral Class. Welcome into the show, Dr. Kofi Chimisi, Abigail Yantachi, Dr. Melaby Amponsa, Dr. Samuel Kwate, Dr. Samuel Amankwa, Dr. Beryl Autre, Dr. Salome Obusufran Paul, Dr. Patience Jeffrey, Dr. Natasha Ose, Dr. Kojo Safo, Dr. Achan Amobadi, and your host, Pastor Kojo Chubisi, onto the Hood Life series as produced by Kofi and Kojo Chubisi. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet the 2019 North American Ghanaian Adventist Doctoral Class. Welcome into the show, Dr. Kofi Chimisi, Abigail Yantachi, Dr. Melaby Amponsa, Dr. Samuel Kwate, Dr. Samuel Amankwa, Dr. Beryl Autre, Dr. Salome Obusufran Paul, Dr. Pay. All right, everybody. All right, everybody, and we are back. I told you by the time I come back, I'm going to have my special guest with me. And so let me take this time and introduce these guests. The first guest that I want to introduce who has achieved that powerful, that awesome, that tremendous accomplishment of doctorate is this person. This person is Ghana made and Michigan raised. I grew up with this person as a child and his basketball skills used to make the people go wild. Oh man, oh man. And now this individual is a doctor. He graduated from the Western New England College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences and now is enrolled in a fellowship program at the Rutgers University of Pharmaceutical Industry. This person right here is a writer. This person right here is a leader. And this person right here is now a husband. Please, you are welcome to the Hood Life Show. Dr. 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 Samuel Quarting. Dr. Sam, thanks for being with us. Man, it's tremendous. You know, I just came from your your wedding, you know what I'm saying? And Dr. Sam, you had a thousand people, you know, at that wedding. (laughs) How how were you able to pull off a thousand people? Talk to me, man. I I I honestly I don't know. I it's I got, we weren't expecting that many people to come, to be honest. But, you um, know, Dr. Sam, we, got people double, asking, we got double the amount that we expected. <laughs> wow, um, that's crazy. So it was, it was crazy. Wow. Uh, you know, Dr. Yeah. Sam, people are, are, are trying to figure out why I'm not married. I'm like, man, you know, I don't know how I'm going to do. I'm, I, you know, your, your wedding gave me a foreshadowing of mine. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't know, I don't know <laughs> hey, Dr. Sam, Quartic, tell me. You know, at any point in the wedding, did you whisper over to your wife and say, baby, we don't even know half of these people? Huh? Be honest, you could be honest. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, like, during the reception, when we walked in, we were like, whoa, like, where are all these people, like, coming from? And then, like, there were some people where I'm like, mm, this person is new. This person is different. I don't know who this is. I don't, but I'm sure, like, she knew who they were or maybe, like, something like that. But I did it. So... Uh-huh. It was just interesting seeing like a bunch of different faces that you know I wasn't really. Familiar. Yeah, I, no, I totally hear that. I totally understand, yeah. man. Well, I mean, it's just part of the experience when you're popular in a famous land like Dr. Sam. But we're not here to talk about your man. <laughs> we're actually here to talk about your doctoral journey. But before we start yeah. doing that, I have another person I also want to introduce as well. This person hails from the T dot from the T dot. He's a proud patron of We the North. He's a proud patron of We the North. And this person's journey to the doctorate wasn't easy. At times, this individual found themselves in the wrong crowd. At times, this individual found themselves not necessarily on the right path, but at a certain point, he was able to get things together. He ended up going to St. Kitts, and in St. Kitts, he went to the University of Medicine and Health Sciences in 2019, in case you forgot, which is this year, he graduated with his doctorate. MD, to be clear. At this moment, I want to welcome to our program, Dr. Samuel Amangwa. Double the Sams, double the trouble. All right, Dr. Samuel Amangwa. Man, thank you for being on. How's everything with you, man? Thank God. All is well. All is well. I'm glad to be here. Oh, man, we're glad to have you. And I'm super excited to hear your journey. And I know a lot of people are 
as well. I know a lot of people are as well. And so at this time, what we're going to do is that we're just going to dive right into it because time's already gone. And I know people are like, Shh, Kojo, shut up. We want to hear Dr. Sam's, uh, Dr. Sam squared. And so we're going to start doing some round of questioning. And I just want you guys to be able to talk. Let's feel free. Let's have a good conversation about these different things. You know, the first question that's on people's mind and also that's on my mind as well um, is the question of, you know, how, you know, the question of how. But what about how? OK, let's talk about it. You know, I'm a pastor and I do a lot of counseling and coaching with people. And one thing I realize that people are experiencing is something we call purpose anxiety. So pretty much purpose anxiety is where you have challenging or nervous feelings about searching for your purpose or about how to live out your purpose. And so my question to you all, and, and whether Dr. Sam Quarting or Dr. Sam Amankwa, whoever it is, uh, you can take the crack at it. You know, my question to you all is pretty much this, you know, how... How did you discover that, you know, for Dr. Sam Kwate, being a pharmacist is what, you know, you were called to do? Or Dr. Samuel Michael, how did you discover that being an MD, being a doctor, is pretty much what you're called to do? Now, I understand that a career is not necessarily your purpose, but your career helps you live out your purpose. And so with that being said, talk to us about that. How did you come to that sort of discovery? Any one of you could take a crack at this. All right. Um, I guess I'll go first. Um, for me particularly, I... Felt like I wanted to be in the health field. I wanted to help people. Um, and when I was graduating high school, my high school was pretty determined for everybody to find their careers. Mm. Um, so they encouraged you know everybody to kind of um, pick like a major or like something that you want to do in college. So I started doing my research within all the different um, health like areas and. I saw a pharmacy and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty nice. Mm. Um, and I took it upon myself to get um, experience or learn about what pharmacy is. And at that time, the only thing that I knew was retail pharmacy. So I went and did an internship um, at a Rite Aid. Mm. And from then I was like, oh man, I love this like profession. Like I want to dive right in with this. So it's kind of how it worked out for me. Man, you know, you, you mentioned how you mentioned how you uh, did your internship at a Rite Aid, and I know where you did it at. You know, this is Barron Springs, Michigan. You know, you had no other choice, man. That's the only no place other that, choice. <laughs> that's the only place they got. Man, so <laughs> tell me this. You know, tell me this. You you said that you know you did the pharmacy thing. And you said, "Whoa, this is nice." I mean, describe nice. What what did nice mean? I mean, did you do it? You know, and you felt like you came alive. Did you do it, and you felt like? You know, your mind was blown. Like, what is nice? You know, and how did nice pretty much say this is what I could, you know, something could be nice. But mm -hmm. Like, for example, ice cream is nice, but, you know, that's not my life career. So, you know, talk to me a little bit about that. Okay. So with, um, with that, when I first um, went in, like, retail pharmacy, you get to deal a lot with patients. Um, you have people that you're working with. I always like the... Um, I like working with other people, like first of all. And as a retail pharmacist, that's what you do. Um, but to the next step, my the person that I was shadowing, he was legit one of the top um, retail pharmacists that I ever like encountered because he formed a relationship with the patients. Um, he would ask them how they're doing. He would give them advice. He would tell them. Um, it was just a way for him to be really like open um, with them. And once I saw that, I was like, wow, like in this profession, this, I could provide help um, to somebody, but I could also form a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And back then, I was honestly really conflicted mm -hmm. um, about whether I wanted to like do ministry or whether to um, <laughs> do like something else. So like in my mind, I was like, well, you know, even if I'm doing the pharmacy gig, um, I could also, you know, help others um, learn more about God based on the relationships that I am able to encounter um, with them mm. in the retail setting. Mm. So that's what like got me driven. I'm like, man, I want to do pharmacy. Mm. This is like it. Mm. So what I'm realizing is that it was your values that helped you find your purpose. You know, it was your values of connecting with people at the same time your values of serving people 
in that sort of capacity, that pretty much said, this is where I'm supposed to go. Now, Dr. Samuel and Mon what about you? What's your story? I mean, you know, yeah. I, I know the parents are always drilling, be a doctor, be a doctor, be a doctor. So, I mean, yes. how did you get to a point where you said to yourself, no, 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 I'm not just doing this because mom is telling me to do so or dad is telling me to do so or because this is the popular route. But I'm doing this because I believe this is my calling. I believe this is what I'm meant to be here for. Talk to us, Dr. Samuel. Yeah, you uh, you raise a good point because um, I think I was already biased towards sciences because, uh, again, uh, you know, family is always saying doctor, lawyer, pharmacist. Um, so, again, I had a narrowed view as to, you know, what do I want to be in the future? Uh, but I guess just sticking with the sciences and, and as uh, uh, Dr. Parting said, I also have an interest uh, to deal with people, uh, to interact with folks. Um, I always wanted to do something in service. At one time, at one point in time, I was thinking of being a minister or a doctor or a physiotherapist. I always wanted to do something uh, with service as well. Um, so as I stuck with the sciences, um, uh, uh, so something else that also helped me was uh, connecting with my school's um, academic and career resource center. Um, they kind of put me in touch with mentors. Um, they sent me off to post-grad fairs. Um, and I, I just really felt that, you know, I have a good chance of, uh, you know, becoming a physician and serving people that way. So it's not something that I always knew, but it was kind of kind of a work in progress. And praying about it, too, and seeing that the Lord was opening doors for me and the road to medicine was just um, opening up. I, I felt like, you know, this is my calling. Let me take this opportunity. And it worked out well. Man, you know, what's sticking out to me from your story is the fact that finding purpose is a process. And I think what people want when it comes to finding purpose is they want it to just hit them in one day. They want it to just hit them in mm -hmm. one hour. But what I'm hearing from your story is that it was a journey of first and foremost figuring out that you had interest in this area. Second of all, it was a thing of your values. You like to serve. And then all of a sudden you're like, Psh. Perhaps being a medical doctor is the best way to do so. Now, you know, what's getting me upset about you guys is that how can you all ditch the ministry, man? I need some partners in this, man. <laughs> anyway, hey, man, uh, what's it called? Maybe, maybe someone else out there will be inspired. Maybe someone else out there will be inspired. Amen. Well, me, you know, there's something else I want to talk to you guys about. You know, one thing people are really interested in is that people want to know the exact steps, okay? They want to know, like, for example, Dr. Sam Quarte, if I want to be a pharmacist, what are the step-by-step -step things that I do in order to get there, at least starting from college? You know, what are the step-by-step -step things I do? If I want to be an MD, Samuel Marco, or Dr. Samuel Marco, what do I do? What are the step-by-step -step things that I do if I want to get there? And so, of course, I know it could look different for different people, but at least the step-by-step -step that you all uh, will be taking. Yeah, I could probably start. So, uh, for medicine, uh I think it's a little bit clear cut uh, once you finish high school and you, you enter college, um, you got to do a few prerequisite courses um, that kind of prepare you to be able to apply uh, for medical school. So usually um, in, in your first year of college, you may have to take like introductory courses to biology, chemistry, maybe organic chemistry, uh, physics. Um, and then there's that um, test called the MCAT test that you usually write uh, probably, I think, around the ending of your third year uh, to be able to apply uh, to medical schools. So the journey is kind of classic, clear cut, you know, get into college, do a few um, science prerequisite courses, do the MCAT. Now, one thing I want to emphasize here is that uh, sometimes I think we um, we just go into sciences or, or, or just uh, um, choose a science um, uh, program in college in order to get into medical school. And maybe you don't really like pure sciences. Uh, I think what I'm trying to say is that, I, at least I know in Canada, that um, you don't have to necessarily have a degree in sciences to get into medical school. So if you have a passion in English, in music, um, in arts, in, in humanities, um, and you, you feel like you could get better grades through those um, programs, um, it's all right to do that as long as you satisfy the prerequisite courses for medical school, again, which are introduction to biology, chemistry. Um, after you get those out of the way, um, you're free to do whatever um, degree you want to do. So that's something I just want to emphasize that if you do want to go to medical school, but maybe the pure sciences is not really um, something uh, you like or something that you're not strong in, 
you can consider to do another program that you're strong in and probably have better results. Mm, now, that, you, know, you know, as you were talking about doing all those sciences, man, I remember when I was back at Oakland University, I had a lot of friends who were science majors, and Dr. Sam Marco, it looked like they had no life, man. Is that true? <laughs> you have no life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, but I, like, I had a friend who, uh, she was happy. She studied English, and she got into medical school. Mm. I know someone else, I think they just they did music, and they got into medical school. So mm. uh, follow your passion, do well, and you could still enter medical school if that's your passion down the road. Mm, okay, excellent. And I think what I'm picking up from that, well, here's my question, though, Dr. Sam. So, I mean, but let's say someone is passionate about English. When you get to medical school, you still have to do some science things. And so it's like, you know, how does a person work with that sort of transition? Like, I love English, but I want to be a doctor. But I get in there and I have to take OCHEM and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's right. crazy. I mean, I, well, so what do you, I mean, what do you think? And, that, and that's a good question. And, and parents are probably thinking about that, too. Um, but again, when I got into medical school, the sciences that I was learning there was much different from the pure sciences I was learning in college. Um, the biology, organic chemistry, physics, uh, to be true with you, that wasn't uh, really relatable to what we we're learning in medical school. And medical school is more clinical uh, and, and less more theoretical in terms of the pure sciences. Mm. So if you're still able to uh, learn how to study through whatever you study in college and build good habits, uh, I think that's what's most important. Um, for, for medical school, just building the habits of being able to be disciplined. Mm. And again, you do have to do some prerequisite courses, as I said, intro to bio, chemistry, and all that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, again, you just need to have the right mindset um, to be able to, to do medicine. Anyone can do medicine, I think. Um, it's not typically hard. Um, it's just uh, learning how to apply it. Yeah. Man, that's a very helpful clarification over there. Thanks for that, because that really helped me. Dr. Sam Quartz, talk to us. I want to be a pharmacist. What are my step to steps? Yes. Um, I, I think one of the first things that if you want to be a pharmacist that you should do is talk to a pharmacist. Mm. Um, at least find somebody that is a pharmacist, find out about what they do, um, and learn if, if it's interesting enough for you to even pursue as a career or pursue that um, specific thing and just like do your research about it. Um, but once you have settled in your mind that this is what you want to do, um, there are multiple tracks. Um, one of those tracks is to go to pharmacy school um, right, side, right out of high school. So pharmacy typically is a six year um, program. So after you graduate high school, after six years, you can become a doctor. Um, you don't have to necessarily do your bachelor's before even um, enrolling in it. And that's the second track where um, some may decide that, okay, um, I want to do my bachelor's um, and then I'll figure out if I want to do pharmacy at that point afterwards um, and then apply to pharmacy school. Mm -hmm. um, so then after you do four years of bachelor's, the actual pharmacy from D program um, would be additional four years um, that you will have to do. Um, so, like, there are those two tracks. If you don't decide to also, um, like, do the bachelor's, you could also do your prerequisites. There are um, lots of pharmacy schools that um, don't require a bachelor's. Um, so as long as you complete the prerequisites, um, there's also a Dr. Amankal is saying for pharmacy where it's called the PCAT. Um, so with the PCAT, um, you take it, some schools require it, other schools also don't require it. So it's all, you know, trying to figure out where is, what path that you actually want to take, but there are numerous paths to go to become a pharmacist. Wow, I, I never had any idea that I could take so many paths if I want to become a pharmacist. I mean, that was very helpful. And, you know, it would be awesome if people want to go this route, they can have continual conversations about with you as to which path will be most effective about them. Not, but here's the truth of the matter. No journey in life is ever smooth. And, you know, Dr. Sam Amankwa, I know that, you know, um, during your time in medical school, you had some particular challenges. Um, you know, I usually say that at the end of the day, life has holes. And, you know, it's not only holes on the road, that's potholes, but sometimes we also experience holes in our heart. 
Um, and those holes in our heart usually take place when something important or someone important um, is taken away. And throughout your medical journey, you had a hole. And you had a hole because someone was taken away from you. In fact, it was your father. Um, and your father passed away. I want you to talk to us a little bit about, you know, that entire experience. You know, your father dying uh, throughout, you know, your medical school journey. I mean, how did that impact you? Did you want to quit? Did you want to give up? Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, Pastor Kojo. So, yeah, my father passed away and um, just before my fourth year of medical school. And it was actually just before my last board exams uh, for medical school. I'll be a few weeks um, just before my board exams he passed. But I'll just make the long story short and just say that, uh, you know, we all have our challenges on our academic journeys, but I can confidently say that God is bigger than our challenges. Mm. Um, looking back now at that experience, uh, I can see that, you know, the Lord allowed me to go through that. Uh, in the, where I'm working now in the past few months, I've been working in the uh, intensive care unit. And every week I had at least one patient who was on the brink of dying. And I had to spend time in family meetings, uh, speaking with the families, talking about goals of care. And each time I was always able to use my experience of my father in that situation. And it always it always helped to console um, the family members a little bit more because they knew that the physician understood what they were going through. And so uh, it was tough in the moment, but support from family, support from the church um, helped. Uh, but again, uh, everyone has challenges. Some are financial challenges. Some are illnesses. But I can safely say God is bigger than our challenges. And he just works things all well. Man, you know, my first sermon that I ever preached, I was about, I, actually, I'm lying. I was like five years old. But one of the first sermons that I preached in New York City, I was about 12 or 13 years old. And my father actually wrote that sermon for me. And typically, I really forgot the entire sermon. But there's one quote that I remember that he put in there. He said that in life, we usually tell our problems. He, he said in life, we usually tell God, God, look how big my problem is. But what we need to start doing is that we need to start looking at our problems and saying, problem, look how big my God is. And that's so powerful because that's what I'm sensing from your story. Um, that at the end of the day, what you did is that you took a trial and you turned it into triumph. You took an opportunity where you could have been a victim and you turned it into victory. And you took a, 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 you know, a place where you could have used it as a setback and used it as a setup. And so in a very real way, you're using this experience to, in fact, enhance your care given as a doctor. And I think that's special. Um, Dr. Sam, you know, uh, Quartin here, um, you know, many people don't know this, but you went through your entire matriculation as an international student. Um, I don't think people understand the staggering implications of being an international student and the unique challenges that come along with that. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so like, as you said, as soon as I graduated high school, um, I became an international student. Um, and with that, it's just this like tuition. Um, there's an international, you know, there's in-state, there's out-of-state, and then there's international oh, I love <laughs> student um tuition that you have to pay um so that was like throughout i think that was my biggest challenge is just trying to um like figure out how to um pay for it. just a lot of different things um i had to take classes that i didn't need to um necessarily take you know, they require you to take a certain number of classes um and just like do so many different things that it just makes your whole journey just a little bit harder than um, everybody else. And I, and I also remember you kind of telling me that one of the challenges is that even a lot of schools were not accepting, you know, international students. At a certain point, did you just say, I'm going to throw in the towel and just pick something else? Because, you know, I mean, this is just too much of an uphill battle. Yeah. So I actually didn't even know that when I started applying to pharmacy school that like I, I read the requirements and they'll be like, they don't accept international students. I'm like, man, like this sucks. <laughs> um, and then like, you're trying to find like schools that are like um, close by, not too far away from like family and things of that sort. Um, so that also made it a little bit harder. So I, I what I did was I applied to as many schools as I can. Okay. Um, 
with the prayer in hopes that, mm. you know, I get into like one of them um, because I'm limited um, just by the mere fact that I was an international student, mm. but that didn't deter me at all from um, applying and moving forward with it. Yeah, you know, that's what the, you know, funny enough, that's what even the Bible says. Just cast your net wide sometimes. Cast your bread on many waters. You don't know which one will return to you. Let me yeah. say this. Let me ask you one last question. You know, while you were in school, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it wasn't a secret. You know, we all, you know, you, you, were, you, were, you were in that relationship, that amazing relationship, which has now turned into a marriage, you know. Uh, you know, we can probably say we, we don't introduce you as a friend with benefits. We don't introduce you as, a, as boyfriend and girlfriend. We introduce you as husband and wife. And so, I mean, how was that, you know, having, having to, having the proposal in your mind, you know, because, you know, surprise, surprising a woman is hard work. They don't understand that, man. They don't understand the, the, the gymnastics you got to go through. I mean, how did you go through all of that while at the same time having this big marriage coming up in your mind, this big wedding coming up in your mind and preparing for it, going for counseling, all that kind of stuff? Um, to be honest, that was one of, you know, the most challenging things that I had to like do. Um, I remember like going through like school, my focus was a lot was I wanna become a pharmacist. So because of that, I, you know, I didn't allow myself to be in like relationships. Um, I often like said no or like whatever. Um, to relationships because I was like, no, I can't like juggle the two school and relationship is just not going to work. Um, but then if right when I, the year that I started pharmacy school, my wife, um, her and I, we started talking. I just prayed about it that Lord, you know, this, this, you know, my goal is to become a pharmacist and um, I'm just trusting that, if you want this to happen, then let it happen um, for me. So that's just where, you know, I put in my um, hope and trust. And my wife was very, very understanding. Um, she better have been. To <laughs> <laughs> just very understanding to the, you know, I can't talk right now. I need yeah, to study. Yeah. I, you know, I don't have time. Yeah. You know, all those things that, you know, other relationships like hey ladies like, take notes take notes take notes you know they had to like do <laughs> i i i wasn't like my i was putting in my time but she wasn't requiring a lot out of me so it really you know helped me to be able to stay focused at school um and to be honest i do not think that me being who i am i would have been able to complete the program if she wasn't you know, I, I was in a relationship with her at the time. Wow. So wow. I give her a lot of credit wow. to her. Wow. That's, that, that's amazing. In, in the very early, she was, wind, she was wind under those wings. And so that's powerful. Shout outs to you, uh, Simonetta, wherever you are. Simonetta, I, I used to say poke your butt, but now it's Simonetta Quark, wherever you are. <laughs> uh, man, well, at this moment, I want to open up the lines. Um, you know, I still got some more questions for these guys, but you all may have some questions as well. Uh, our phone number that we're using at this moment is 347-791-1. Four zero six. You can call in if you have questions for Dr. Sam Quarting and Dr. Sam Abankwa. We only have 20 minutes left. I feel like this was so short, man. I'm really having a good time, and I want to keep talking some more. Um, so you can call that number. We'll get you in. Um, in addition to that as well, if you would like a free ebook, you can go to the link, and when you go to the link, you can uh, register, you can put your name in, you can put your email in, and when you do that, we'll be able to send you a free ebook, which is called Top 25, Volume 1. And with this free ebook, what we will be doing is that we'll be giving you the top 10 secrets of success that Dr. Samuel Quarting has and Dr. Samuel Abankwa has. And then we'll also preempt the next individuals that we're going to be interviewing. And so in addition to that as well, you'll be able to get five of their success secrets, but you would only be able to get the rest of their five by tuning in tomorrow and getting into volume two. And so it's a whole package that we're giving you. We're celebrating the right way we're creating value. So call in 347 Seven nine one one four zero six. And so at this moment, um, we have a okay, no callers as of yet. And so I have another question that I'd like to ask you guys. Um, the question I'd like to ask you guys is this, and I'm going to um, Dr. Samuel Lamanqua for this question. And so the question here is this the question is Ghanaians have an endemic disease, okay. 
The disease that we have is, I call it the disease of the pro. Not professional, but disease of the procrastination. That's what we got. And I always say this, the only time that Ghanaians don't procrastinate is when they're planning their wedding or they're planning their funeral. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I know a friend of mine who always procrastinates, but when it comes to their wedding, they started planning it two years in advance. But we have that disease. But Dr. Sam Amankwa, in the book, you tell us that one of your secrets to being successful is that you made sure that you were always one step ahead. You made sure you never procrastinated. What was your secret, man? Because low-key, I still got to learn it a little bit. <laughs> and me too. We all still, still got to work on it. Um, but yeah, in terms of studying, and uh, uh, that's something one of my seniors had told me that always try to be at least one to two classes ahead of the, the class. Um, so pre-reading, uh -huh. uh, uh, that's that's one big thing that has always helped me. Sometimes it's not very realistic, but if, if you start out doing that, it, it helps you in the long run uh, to, uh, to do better, I think. And then another thing I think that's crucial is that um, for people who are interested in, you know, professional lines of work, um, just knowing the timelines and deadlines uh, that are ahead of you. For example, um, if you want to go to medical school and uh, you want to write your MCAT, just knowing when you need to write it, um, know when schools are accepting applications, when they're not accepting applications. So uh, just being timeline ready is very important because sometimes you miss out on a timeline and it sets you back like one year, six months. And so uh, just being a little bit more proactive rather than reactive uh, will really help to save time and just helps in the long run. Dude, I mean, that's a big consequence. Your procrastination can set you back a year and a half. That's tremendous. And, you know, if I had that kind of incentive, I'll make sure I'm getting things done ahead of time. But, you know, in a very real way, as I'm thinking about it, that's how I should think about all life. That if I procrastinate at the front end, I'm going to experience the pain on the back end. And so at the end of the day, you know, and the reason why we procrastinate many times is that we don't want to experience certain pain immediately. So we end up just transferring it to the back end. But at the end of the day, no matter what, you can't avoid the pain. And so I always tell people, life is not a matter of avoiding pain. It's actually a matter of picking your pains. Are you going to pick it in the beginning or are you going to pick it at the end? And so really good point that you're making over there. Now, Dr. Sam, you put a controversial statement in the book. You know, you talked about one of your top 10 secrets to success is keep your plans off of social media. Now, I, I'm not going to say I took personal gripe with that. But, you know, I'm the type of guy where I'm a very big social media guy. I mean, you already know I have a huge presence on social media. And I'm always telling people what I'm doing, what I've done. Uh, and so I'm interested to hear your perspective because maybe I can, I can make a little shift in myself. I can make a little shift in my life. And so my question to you is, you know, why did you say that's one of your top ten secrets of success, keeping your plans off of the big SM? That's not, stand, that's not standing for what you're thinking about. SM is social media. So what do you think? All right, let's, let's talk about that, y'all. Um. Yeah, so when I when I had put that, I was honestly in the mindset of just not letting the world into your life completely. I mean, you're off, you're at school, you're you know studying. Sometimes people let social media distract them. Mm. They might put certain things on there that will cause them to um, just fall. Um, basically from what they're trying to do. Um, so that was mainly like where I was hitting at. Um, and then somebody always told me that, you know, in life we always have enemies of progress. Um, people that want to see you fail, people that um, are just not looking for your best interest. Um, and just even like sometimes when you do something and the struggles or the failures that... Um, that you go through, people like see all of that. And I'm just in the mindset of, you know, finish, do what you're doing. And then if you want to let the world know, okay, this is what I have done. Okay. So, so, so your main thing is kind of like the distraction. Don't get distracted while being on social media. So is your kind of thing like, you know, distraction in terms of it takes away your time or distraction in terms of you see haters or distraction in terms of you get jealous of other people, you know, be a little bit more specific over there. Yeah, um, it's, it was just more of, like, it taking your time and also it being um, just a hindrance um, 
to what you're trying to achieve. When it comes to like education, um, that was just my like view on it that, you know, especially like for me, I just felt like I didn't need to let the whole world know that I was trying to do pharmacy, mm. uh, posting like, oh, like every day, this, this, this and that. Mm. Um, but like once I was done, hey, this is what I've like completed. Mm. So, you know, that, that was like my mindset with it. Excellent, excellent. I, I, think I'm, I, I think I'm understanding it a little bit better. And, you know, the thing that I love about all this advice that we gave in the top 10 secrets is I think of the top 10 secrets um, like this. You know, we start off the book by saying, I hate one-way streets. And why do I hate one-way streets? I'm from New York City. One-way streets always get you lost. One-way streets always get you confused and twisted. And in the same sort of way, um, the book starts off by saying that in the same way, we hate one-way advice, you know, because what we realize is that advice is customized for different people. And so in the same sort of way, there may be some people like what you just mentioned who get very distracted by social media, it takes up all their time, takes up all their energy, and they need to stay off. And then there's some th those who can get energy from it. And so I really appreciate that you're providing the caution. And I think as I'm listening to you, the deeper thing is know who you are. And based on who you are, make those adjustments accordingly. And so, man, that's tremendous. Well, at this time, I just want to continue to open up the lines. If you would like to call and ask these two illustrious doctors a question, a comment, or a concern, please give us a call, 347-791-1406. In addition to that as well, I mean, it could be about anything, whether the challenges they face, mistakes that they made, um, whether you have a question about the process, whatever the case may be, go ahead and give a call. In addition to that as well, if you would like a top 25 book, you can also fill out the link, put in your name, put in your email. We'll be able to get volume one over to you. Finally, last but not least as well, if you would also like to be a person who, while in the hood life, you also can have continual conversations with us, stick towards the end because we have a special gift that we're going to be sharing with you. We got about 10 minutes left within the hood life. My question to you all is this. Um, hmm, what advice would you... No, let me, let, me not, let me not go to that. I'll make that your closing statement. Let me ask you all this question. Now that you have this doctor degree, I mean, what's next in life? I mean, what is it now? I mean, is it just get the doctor, get your job, you know, work in 9 to 5, make a lot of money, donate to Pastor Kojo's church, and then, like, that's it? Or is it, like, you know, is there some bigger plans that you have? And so any of you all can take a crack at it, talk to me. Um, I, I start off with me. I, I think my, my big thing is just introducing people to Christ. I think that's one of my like job on this like planet um, to do. When um, Christ was leaving, he left us a message to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all the things that he has given us. So with me, it's just not, yeah, I've gotten um, my farm D, so I'm just going to uh, make money. But I think this is really when life begins for me um, in terms of, okay, I've done this. Now my life is like moving forward to be do doing God's work. So that's where I'm going. Now. Man, I, I, I mean, you know, the crazy thing is that a lot of people are not thinking that way. And as a minister of the gospel, that makes me happy that you're trying to use your profession as the vehicle um, through which to, to share Jesus. How about you, Dr. Samuel Michael? What, what is you? What's, what's next? You know what I'm saying? Is it, is it now? You know, I always call it the American Ghanaian dream. You know, you got, your, you got your degree, you get your job, now get your wife and get your family, and life pretty much stops there. Is, is that pretty much, you know, are you trying to live that dream, or do you have more to it? Yeah, it's like you said originally or initially before that uh, it's still a process, so the dream is still ongoing. Uh, to be honest, uh, I'm still not exactly sure where I want to, take my career to the next step. But I, I am connecting with my seniors, people who are um, already a few years um, ahead of me. Um, the fields that I'm interested in probably um, specializing in, I'm trying to connect with people there as well and networking. So I'm not exactly sure yet, but I'm still trying to take steps to get a better understanding. And I really appreciate what Dr. Potting said to you. Uh, I'm asking myself all the time, how am I gonna be useful now uh, for the Lord? And so uh, these are things I'm still wrestling with, but I know the Lord will show the way. Man, I, I totally believe it. Hey, man, we're about to conclude this uh, show. 
Uh, but before we conclude the show, I just want to put two more questions out there. The first question uh, is pretty much, you know, something I've been thinking about, you know, and maybe something that some other people are thinking about as well. You know, did you make any mistakes along your path? You know, you know, it's one thing to have challenges, but it's also another thing to make mistakes. You know, did you fail a class? Uh, did you, uh, you know what I'm saying? Did you, I mean, did you make a, did you miss a deadline? Did you, did you make a mistake? And how did you bounce back if you made that kind of mistake? Yeah, I'll, I'll chime in quickly on that. Uh, high school, I made the mistake of uh, choosing the wrong crowd to, you know, chill with. Uh, and I suffered in my freshman year of high school because of that. Uh, uh, the way I got, weed, pardon me? No, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes they had that saying that show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Mm. And though I don't totally agree with that fully, there is some truth to that. Uh, but the way I got out of that was um, um, trying to keep your parents in the loop um, when, when you're in, in your academic journey. Initially in high school, at times I try to hide my report cards from, from my parents and all. That didn't help. But whenever I kept them in the loop, they kept me accountable. Uh, and, and, and that helped me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. No, I mean, dude, that's, 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 Doc, that's so amazing. Because at, yeah. a lot of times we like to throw off the parental accountability. But at the end of the day, our yeah. parents are really there to really help us towards success. Yeah. And I'll just say one more quick thing, Kojo, is that uh, I did fill one course in my in my journey. That's all right. And that was calculus. That's all right. Calculus <laughs> tore me up. So just a, a message of hope that if anyone has ever filled a course, it ain't over. If I'm still a doctor today and I feel calculus, it's possible for you, whatever maybe I've filled in the past, it's, there's still hope for you. And, you know, what the crazy thing is, Dr. Sam, as you are operating, you know, what type of, you know, doctor, are you going, are you going to try to specialize or anything of that nature? What, what, what area are you going? Yeah, so right now I'm doing internal medicine. Okay. Uh, that's basically adult medicine. Uh, but I have a strong interest in endocrinology and diabetes and um, hormone metabolism. And, you know, the funny part is that as you're helping someone with diabetes or hormone uh, metabolism, they're not going to be asking you, uh, what you get on calculus? What was your score? Uh, can I see your report card? All they're going to know is that now you're highly qualified in order to help them out. And so that's a really big note of hope. How about you, Dr. Sam Quartin? I mean, were you all perfect? I mean, goody two-shoes or there were some mistakes along the way, man? No, I, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, just coming up, like how Dr. Armonko was saying, failing exams. I remember my first exam in pharmacy school. Got a 56 on it. My Lord. Um, <laughs> so like you know I, I remember i was like oh my goodness like wow this is real like you know but um it was always the mindset of not not giving up um just pushing forward one thing that we always used to say in pharmacy school is c's make degrees mm. um, so like at the end of the day like the the goal is to get through it you get through it, you pass your um, license exam, you become a pharmacist, you provide um, help to people. It's all like a learning process. Like it, you don't become a doctor in like one day. Um, it's a continuous progress. So um, I think that was my mindset moving forward. And let me tell you, C's get degrees and you'll see your way out. That's pretty much the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know something, guys? You know, the, you know what I love from all of this is at the end of the day, um, no one's journey is perfect. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's not about perfection, it's about striving. And at the end of the day, if you strive, striving will cover a multitude of mistakes. Guys, at this moment, for those who are viewing and those who are listening, these are the powerful and amazing stories of our graduates right here, of our doctors right here, Dr. Samuel Quarting and Dr. Samuel Amankwa. The truth of the matter is that they have a wealth of experience, and they have a wealth of wisdom to share with each and every person who wants to get into their respective fields as well. If you feel like as you've listened to Dr. Samuel Kwarteng and Dr. Samuel Amankwa, number one, you have resonated with your story. If you feel like you have resonated with the experience, maybe he was an international student, you're an international student. Maybe as his father died, you realize that you have a, someone who was close to you that also passed away as well. And perhaps you want to be able to talk to these individuals a little bit more in terms of receiving actual steps of how to actually go and get into this profession. Perhaps you just need some coaching, you know, with some specifics 
as to how you're in the program and you need some coaching, some specifics as to how to kind of make it through. You know, they want to make their time available to you so that you can get this one on one contact. You can get this one on one wisdom that they will be able to share with you. If you're interested in this at this moment, what we want you to do is that there's another link within the entire program, the YouTube description. There's also a link within the Facebook as well. You can click on that link and what you can actually do is that you can also sign up for a coaching experience with Dr. Samuel Quarting or Dr. Samuel Amagua. You can sign up for a coaching experience. And pretty much when you sign up for this coaching experience, the truth of the matter is at the end of the day, we don't value what we don't invest in. And so, yes, this coaching experience will ask you for a certain type of monetary investment. But that monetary investment lets you lets us know and lets them know that you are serious about improving. You're serious about development. And so... And at the end of the day, their time is valuable and they want to make sure that they use it well. And so, yes, it will ask you for an investment. But the beautiful thing is that with the investment, you're going to get back so much more value. And so you can click that link. And when you click that link, you'll be able to sign up for this coaching experience. OK, at this moment, we are about to close. But before we close, what I'd like to ask at this moment to both of you in your closing statements is pretty much this. What advice would you give to someone who is entering into your field? Or you can also give enough. What advice would you give to someone who is in your field and they feel like giving up at this moment? And so uh, Dr. Samuel Carton will start with you and Dr. Samuel Mankwa will finish with you. Sure. So my advice um, that I will give is to learn about pharmacy as much as possible. Um, one thing that I, th I think we always say networking, but nobody takes networking seriously. Like, honestly, network, network, network. Pharmacy is such a small community. Like, it will surprise you the amount of people that know each other. Um, so just network as much as you can. Um, and don't give up. One thing that you should always remember is if you want to be a pharmacist, a doctor, a nurse practitioner, um, a lawyer, like, don't let money become an issue for you. Don't let that deter you from accomplishing your goals, uh, believing in yourself, getting your dreams. Um, for those that are in it now, continue to push, um, continue to move forward. Um, just remember that God didn't put you there for you to fail. That was one thing that I always kept at the back of my mind that God did not put me in the pharmacy program, made me go through all those things just to get kicked out of pharmacy school. I don't think that was his plan. So just keep that in the back of your mind that no matter what, God will help you to finish. So just continue to push forward, trust in God, and everything will work out for you. You know, I love, there's a song that says, he didn't bring me this far to leave me. I believe that. Dr. Samuel Kwan, what are you? Yeah, I'd like to speak to uh, those who are at the college level uh, who are interested in going to medical school. Um, again, I would uh, advise that uh, get your money's worth for what you're paying for in college in terms of your tuition. Uh, again, uh, if I was to go back to college, I probably wouldn't major in what I majored in, which was neuroscience, a pure science. Um, I probably would do something that was a little bit more practical, a little bit more professional, maybe nursing. And why do I say that? Because um, had I not gone into medical school, um, I still would have had a professional degree. I would have been able to join a workforce um, and all that money I paid uh, for my tuition would not be in vain. So again, if you have medical school in your mindset, um, I would recommend that whatever you choose for a college degree, maybe think about doing a professional college degree because once you do that, it will still help you to be able to apply for medical school and you will get the more of your money's worth in terms of tuition. Man, I totally, I totally, I totally resonate with that. And you know what I love about you is that you gave so much specifics in that. And this is why people need to actually sign up with a coaching program with you so that they will be able to get even more and even more of that. Well, all our viewers who have tuned in, all our viewers who will tune in, 
We thank you so, so much for coming to our first segment of The Hood Life. I can't complete Hood Life without one more thing, though. There's a person who has literally been the mastermind and the orchestrator behind the entire Hood Life program. This man, I classify him as the man, the myth, and the legend. He came up with the concept. Not only did he come up with the concept, but he has promoted the concept vigorously. And he's actually just joined me right now in the studio as well. And so at this moment, I want to introduce the man... The myth, the legend, Dr. Kofi Tumasi. Come join, come join, man. Yeah, for sure, man. It's working behind the scenes for tonight's program. Uh, but he'll be joining us for subsequent ones. For sure, for sure, for sure. But I think, honestly, we had really great feedback from those that tuned in. And those who didn't get a chance to tune in, make sure you come on tomorrow night, tomorrow night again at 8 p.m. We will be bustling, hustling, and doing this series once again. And not only that, man, the coaching program is really something that we're putting out there for you all. Like I said, all these people reach the pinnacles of their careers because of certain habits that they had to adopt in their whole lives. And the whole thing is this. With this series and what you just learned from them, when you buy this coaching program, which we put at a really discounted price, you can actually gain some of their secrets to success. And then the next thing that you see right below the video you will see the link to the free book that Kajo and I feature in the Hood Life cast that we put together. Now, this is a book that also provides gems, wisdoms, and just some really good advice to really, you know, that time in the night when you need some motivation, this book should help you out. The time when you need some motivation just to go out there and gain a hold of your dream, this book is to help you out. So we definitely want you to make sure that you get a copy of this free book. After tonight, volume one will not be available. And we're about to shut it down. So even if you try to replay this video, you won't be able to gain access to the book. So make sure you get it on. Because we're about to close out in a few seconds here. But obviously to Dr. Sam and Dr. Amankwa, uh, I want to thank you all for doing this. I actually went to elementary school with Sam. So, man, it's so funny how things come in the full circle, man, we graduate the same year, so that's a pleasure. And obviously, the other Dr. Sam Wamonko, you know, I met your mother um, back in Canada when I was there in August, man. She was just so excited. She told me the good stuff you're doing out in Maryland, man, and I've known you for a while, too. So just keep on pushing, keep on grinding, and I know you all are going to make great impacts in community. Um, and so I want to say this. Uh, any shout-outs? Any shout-outs that sure, you two want to sure. give? Any shout-outs? Sure. Don't, do don't, don't forget the key ones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because the, one of the Pastor good ones Co is waiting for you at home, all right? right, right. Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Kojo was saying his mom is his biggest cheerleader, and for me too, my mother, Miss Cecilia, has been my cheerleader, my first mentor, instructor, teacher, and so just a shout out to her, all the sacrifice she poured in. God bless you. Thank you so much, and uh, I know we're happy right now, so just my shout out to my mom for just being there for me. Hey, Mama, I hope you're listening. You better be listening, Mama, now. Mama, you better be listening. That was a beautiful one. Uh, Dr. Sam McQuarton, what about you? Yeah, I would like to shout out my wife, because if I don't, I'll hear about it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for everything that you've done and what you continue to do. I want to shout out my parents, Pastor and Mrs. Um, Quarton. Thank you, guys. And my sister, husband, my niece and nephew, Kwame and Jason. Um, Kwame, <laughs> Kwame and the ghost. Um, and just everybody that supported me throughout my journey. Um, you all know who you are. Thank you so much. And thank you guys too for, um, setting this up. We really appreciate it. Sure. Thank you for being with us. We will be back on tomorrow at eight o'clock PM. We're going to have two special guests who will be along with us. In addition to that as well, if you would like to get volume two of the top 25 secrets to success of the hood life doctoral accomplice, then you want to make sure that you also tune in as well. Until then, take care and God bless you. All right, take care. Have a good night. It froze on you. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet the 2019 North American Ghanaian Adventist Doctoral Class. Welcome into the show, Dr. Kofi Chimisi. Abigail Yantachi, Dr. Melaby Ampasa, Dr. Samuel Kwate, Dr. Samuel Amankwa, Dr. Beryl Autre, Dr. Salome Obusu Paul, Dr. Patience Jemfi, Dr. Natasha Osei, Dr. Kojo Safo, 
Dr. Achan Amobadu, and your host, Pastor Kojo Chubisi, onto the Hood Life series as produced by Kofi and Kojo Chubisi. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to meet 2019 North American Ghanaian Adventist Doctoral Class. Welcome into the show, Dr. Kofi 